five star match is like, I mean, to me, five star match even today should be like, okay, this is probably going to win match of the year. You know, it was kind of like, you know, once the break was made, he's going to WWE. And I mean, he told his friends he wasn't, or at least some friends. But even then, I knew it's like, look, it's Cody and he's protecting the business. Well, he got away with it because he can draw. If some, it was, if it was someone who couldn't draw, they'd never be back. Dave, I feel like this has been a long time coming. I've wanted to have you on the show for a while. So here we are. Thanks for coming on. Oh, anytime. Yeah, I've been, uh, I was really excited when, um, you know, Derek tried to set this whole thing up and everything. Yeah. Well, I've, I've known you for years. Like I, I would run into you at the, you know, when AEW was first starting out, when they were doing press scrums and no other media company at the time was, or no other wrestling company was doing that at the time, would run into you there and chat with you there. You're like an enigma. For a lot of people, I think a lot of people will see your name or see quotes that you have said, but I don't really know if anybody knows Dave Meltzer. Not as many. I mean, I mean, I think most people don't really understand what I do. I do agree that I do agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, well, I mean, what is it that you do then? What, what, what I just I just think I do? just I just I just cover wrestling the same way that I covered all, every other sport that I covered ever since yeah. uh, I was a teenager, you know, and yeah. doing high school sports and you know, just like the whole deal. Yeah. What do you think it is that the people think that you do? I'm not sure. I mean, <laughs> um, <laughs> I think they think I just rate wrestling matches, which is like the, the smallest thing that I do, but I do try to do that to, to, you know, and it's recommendations for people who, you know, just like, Hey, go out of your way to see this match. And this is how much you should go out of your way to see it is essentially what it is. And then just kind of, uh, you know, opinions on what are the matches that you should see matches of the year you know things like that which is always a great debate you know at the end of the year and during the year is i mean everybody has the term now match of the year candidate and all that you know i mean it's yeah. and you know so yeah i add my two cents like these are the ones that i think you know and it's like that's pretty much it and uh so i've been doing that for for a long long time it wasn't it wasn't my system but uh i guess i get credit for it now I mean, you are the guy when people think of five star matches, you are the name that gets attached to that now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is which is fine, you know, and it's everything's opinion and everything. So sure. It's like there's no wrong opinion. Your own opinion is fine. But my opinion is also fine. You've been doing this since is it 1980 when you started this? The the awards would be 1980, but the observer would have been the end of 1982 um, because I was tape trading with people when videotapes first came out. And so the people who I tape traded with, we did our, that watched like wrestling everywhere. You know, we would yeah. watch all the tapes of all the different regional companies. So we would do our awards at the end of the year. So that started in 1980. Man, yeah. so a long time. You, I mean, that's longer than I've been alive, Dave. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I was I born in 1983, but I mean, if, if you were covering wrestling and watching wrestling back then, I mean, we're gonna talk about a bunch of things here, but how much did you watch it change into the mid eighties with, you know, Hulkamania and everything that changed after that with WWF at the time. I mean, it's, but it always changes. I mean, that's the thing that you kind of learn in time and you learn a perspective. I mean, I, I feel like I've been through several generations of the exact same thing and the exact same things being said. Mm -hmm. I mean, like when I was a kid and, and told that Ric Flair didn't know how to work by the older guys and Ricky Steamboat didn't know how to work um and I'm, and i'm watching going like this these are the these are like the best matches i've ever seen mm. and they're going like oh they don't know how to work they all they do is high spots and now it's like i've been through like three or four generations of that now so it's kind of hilarious and when i look back and i try to tell people that and and some people get it and some people you know will probably never get it but you know it's 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 a generational thing and i mean one of the things is is if you look back in history like uh 1915 farmer burns is saying that these guys aren't really wrestlers like mm -hmm. in my day you know they're you know or when gus sonnenberg became the big draw and all the you know strangler lewis and those guys saying you know this isn't wrestling you don't shoulder block and things like that so it's it, it's something that i pre presume will go on forever because the business always has to change you know and um I mean, Patterson, Pat Patterson used to tell me that the only thing that stays the same in wrestling is that it's always going to change. Mm. It's just so interesting that like, I think with the advent of the internet, it seems like people complain a lot about wrestling. Yeah, I know. I know. Like, I mean, it's one thing, it's one thing like there's, there's valid complaints, but sometimes sure. like you'll see, you know, things are hitting really strong and the crowd yeah. reactions are great. And then trying to say somehow that's wrong. That's bad. I mean, I've had people go like, oh, you know, it's like, it's, you know, it's, it's not fair to 
to um, watch this stuff now because the crowd's so easy. And it's like, you know, they were easy. You know, when, when guys are over, it's always easier. What can you say? I feel like this generation of wrestling fans or just current wrestling fans always go back, at least right now, to it's never going to be like the Attitude Era. It's not going to be like the Attitude and Era. And it won't. And it won't. Oh, I mean, as far as it's popular, who knows? I mean, it goes up and down. Like, if you go a couple of years before the Attitude Era, we're talking about mid-90s, yeah. I mean, it was dead. You know what I mean? It was like, yeah. and that's a real learning thing. It's like, it was so, WWF and WCW were so weak. And then, it came, you know, the Monday Night Wars, and it became the hottest it ever was. And then, you know, things happen. Um, you know, I mean, right now we're we're stronger. It's probably stronger than it's been in many, many years. It's, mm-hmm. it's, I don't know that it will ever be. Um, I mean, viewership wise, it'll never be like the Attitude Era because, you know, TV's changed, life has changed, things like that. And um, there's just so many more forms of entertainment out there. But it's very, very strong. And, um, you know, people are willing to spend far more money on it than in the Attitude Era. So there is yeah. that difference. The, the crowd, the crowd is more into wrestling. It's a much smarter crowd. It's not just, um, you know, I mean, it's not it's not as much of a fad as it was in, let's, let's say, the late 80s late 90s but it's a it's more solid economically than it's ever been by far oh so, yeah and, and more it's interesting sta- though like people stable. will try to compare the numbers now the ratings now to the ratings that we saw in the but late you 90s. can't compare that because because anyone in, anyone in television it's like a show the most popular shows on network tv do numbers that would get them immediately canceled <laughs> yes 20 20 30 years ago yeah. so when you're going in there i mean i know that like for you know, like an N- NBA Finals or NFL, NFL anything, their numbers can compare mm-hmm. to the past, but almost everything else is like dwindled in comparison. So, like if you go like okay, five years ago, WWE was doing, you know, two point five million viewers for Raw every week, and it's a number that they're probably, you know, maybe maybe they'll reach, maybe they'll never reach again, or maybe they'll yeah. reach with some super show. But I mean, the point of that is, is that, but it's way more popular now. I mean, like yeah. I always judge on, you know, um, you know, basically, you know, you know, attendance, you know, I mean, that's, that's the real barometer to me. It's always been, you know, for Vince McMahon as well, the money barometer is ratings, but ratings in comparison, when, when you're comparing ratings, the thing you got to look at is placing, you know, of your night placing during the week, you know, placing against your competition if number one there, you know, on Friday night is 0.16, just as an example, then 0.16 is a hell of a number. It's number one out of, um, you know, 125 stations, yeah. right? Um, it sounds like a terrible number to some people. And, and you know, years ago, it would have been, you know, mm-hmm. but you have to compare it to time. Ratings are about time and place and, and everything. And, and Raw is, um, you know, Raw is very often the number one entertainment uh, show on cable for the yeah. week, number one, number two. And, Dynamite is usually, you know, five or six, you know, in that range. So they're very, very successful shows. You know, even if you go like, oh, you know, uh, TNA did more viewers. And yeah, it sure. did. But, but you know, can they go around? I mean, like, look, you know, AEW is going to do, I think they're at um, almost 66,500 tickets sold for Wembley. You know, it's like when, when you know, whoever did that. You know, I mean, yes, WWE in 1992, that's it. Um, you know what I mean? And and WrestleManias. And that's that's it in the history of wrestling. I mean, from all of the, you know, Hulk Hogan's and Luthez's and uh, Bill Goldberg's and Stone Cold's and Dwayne, you know, it's like they're, you know, wrestling, wrestling um, is, is uh, you know, it's not, it's not, I would say it's, it's super, super popular right now. Not yeah. at record, not at record levels. I, I do believe the Attitude Era was more popular overall, but it's a different society. And I think it's, you know, like I said, it's very, very healthy. Lots more to get to in this conversation, but we got to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this episode and also for letting you try Blue Chew for free. Yeah, for free. Just go to bluechew.com, use the promo code CVV, and you just have to pay $5 for shipping. So if you want to try Blue Chew, which is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and for a fraction of the cost, this is your chance to do it. And it comes to you in a completely unmarked package so oh package you see what i did there so nobody knows what's going on here and even if you don't need help in that department it's 
kind of a fun thing to try out and I promise you, the missus will not be upset about this. So go to bluechew.com, use the promo code CVV, and you can try Blue Chew absolutely free. You just have to pay $5 for shipping. Bluechew.com, the promo code is CVV. Although people will look at the Wembley numbers and then go, ah, but what about these shows that are happening in Canada right now? What about these AEW shows AW that are and really perfect. struggling? AW, yeah, AEW has some shows that are struggling. And maybe, yeah. you know, look what we look at WWE. I mean, one thing, and, and again, when you're number one, it's easier to move and be hot. When you're number two, it is tougher. It's not impossible. But I mean, with WWE, I think the perfect thing to learn from is it really isn't that much that changed a lot. I mean, I look at when I look at the WWE and um, its its growth and popularity over the last year, I really look at signing Cody Rhodes and, of course, the bloodline angle and yes. that and then I have everything else, you know, certain things got cool, like seeing Seth Rollins song, you know, is like a real big deal right now. And, and that all helps. But I mean, it, it's really you know, you just have this great bloodline angle, one of the greatest angles and scripted things that they've done in so many years. Yeah. And they've gone from doing what I would call well to doing excellent. And, you know, you can look at historically when it comes to um, wrestling, you hit on a right, on, on a good angle, you know, you it, it you can really move the numbers a lot. And, um, you know, AEW is one angle away from it. Now, of course, at the same time, um, you know, it's like those angles don't last forever. You know, it's kind of like, hey, let's look look at the NWO, right? NWO, I mean, WCW just got so, so, so popular. But, you know, you have to follow up because it, it's it, not, nothing lasts forever. The bloodline angle won't last forever either. You know, I've so heard people say the bloodline angle is top three wrestling storylines of all time or top five wrestling stories li lines of all time. And I'm like, maybe you have a bit of a recency bias because you're seeing this on TV right now. But I mean, th this is a great angle. It's a great angle. I don't know about like, yeah, where I would rate it of all time, um, you know, with all the different angles that have done things. I mean, it's different, you know, and you're watching it with different eyes. But all I could say is it's very, very successful. And, yeah. um, you know, and it's got a lot of layers. The, the people who are in charge of it have done a great job with it. And and the actors involved, you know, Roman Reigns and Jay and Sami Zayn when he was involved. Sami Zayn, I, I mean, I think he was the catalyst of all of it. I mean, it's yeah. like it's it's gone on without him in that direct angle. But. I think he was the one who who really jump started the whole thing. Yeah. If we go way back here, Dave, what were people saying when you were covering pro wrestling in the early 80s, back when it, you know, we weren't sure if this was real or scripted? Well, we were sure, but um um <laughs> I mean, if you look back at newspaper stories in the 1910s, you know, you know, you'll see that people knew back then, but um I think in the industry at first, I was um it was it was like pretty negative yet, you know, I mean, like Eddie Graham and Jim Crockett and Bill Watts and all those guys all subscribed and, and Vince all subscribed in red. So, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I, people used to tell me I was like public enemy number two behind Vern Gagne because everybody hated Vern, but whatever. Um, you know, you know, it, yeah, it, it was something new. It was not well received and, uh, they didn't want, you know, they wanted the coverage. I don't think they really they 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 did that era of people didn't want mainstream coverage like they were afraid of the regular media whereas now you know everybody just covets that regular media yes. back then they didn't want the regular media because they were so afraid they would tell people that it was fake so you know regular media when they tried to cover it never really got a lot of cooperation and if you look back there's not a ton of mainstream media stories on wrestling in the 70s even though wrestling in the 70s just an example was was you know there was kind of a boom there in the early 70s it's just so interesting that like, I feel like wrestling didn't have a ton of coverage, the internet, everything boomed. And yep, I think yep. then it boomed again with social media. And I mean, the amount of people that are covering wrestling now is, I, I mean, there's never been this many people covering wrestling. No, 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 no. And there's never been so much news out on wrestling, which well, is- Well, uh, I think news in, in quotations, right? That's the interesting thing about pro wrestling. Well, there's, there's it, 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 it's, it's funny when, cause you, with, the, with the news thing, because it's like, I look at stuff and that, that people use as news and I'll go like, you know, this isn't, you know, I mean, but you know what, that's not unique to wrestling. That's unique to everything. As far as, um, you know, the, um, just the, the nature of the news, like the news that the news business that I grew up on, um, and I was taught in school. I mean, it was really all about news and it was not about 
money, even though in the end it's always about money, right? Yeah. But now I don't even think there's that pretense. I think that yeah. it's you know, and that and that's not just wrestling. That's everything. When when you watch, like when I watch real news now or whatever what purports to be real news, yeah. And compare it to the real news I watched. You know, the the whole mentality is so different. I mean, there were leanings and things like that in the past, but now it's it's like it's a game and it's not trustworthy and it's 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 sad in a lot of ways. Like I see some of these headlines now and I'm not pointing fingers at any particular sites here, but they'll be like 37 year old former WWE champion agrees to something unbelievable. And you're like, I don't know. I don't know what any of this means, but of course I'm going to click to see who it is. Oh, that's who it is. All well, it's, right. it's that's, 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 that's the mean Gene Okerlund hotline stuff in, in, uh, you know, in modern times. That's an yeah. interesting point. Yeah. Yeah. He was the first to, to do that, that I recall. What do you think has been the biggest shift in wrestling journalism since you got into it to where it is now? I mean, everything having to do with the internet, you know, yeah. that's, that's, it's changed it and it's opened it up. And um, like news is so much quicker. Like when I started news, um, you know, it took much more time and rumors spread that weren't true that mm. stayed, you know, like for weeks and weeks now, you know, things pretty much, um, you know, it's a minute by minute thing as opposed to a week by week or a month by month. Um, you know, so so that's different. Um, you know, I mean, there's access to a lot of information. And at the same time, um, you know, there's it's 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 really it's really tough in a lot of ways. Um, it's not tough to get information, but it's tough because um, everything is so how would I say this? Um, you know, people have their view, have have their sides, and they've already picked their sides. Yeah. So if you try to be down the middle, you're going to be an enemy with everyone. So it's yeah. uh, that that. But you know what? I mean, there was that's the, that probably always existed, but now it just seems um, it seems more um, prevalent now than before. Yeah, and I think that something's happening with news in general, not just in wrestling, but news in general, where it's like you want to be first. And it doesn't matter as much about being right. It's just about being Absolutely. first and getting the headline out there first. I think so. You know, yeah, yeah. I would, I would, I would think so that, that, that there's that. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. We'll get right back to the conversation in just a minute. But if you love watching UFC pay-per-views, but you don't like paying UFC prices, NordVPN is the answer. Big thank you to them for sponsoring this video. But yeah, if you don't like paying those huge prices, just use NordVPN to go in, change your virtual location with just one click, by the way. Change it to somewhere where pay-per-views don't cost as much as they cost here in the US where I live. So on top of the great protection that NordVPN gives you, protecting you from hackers coming in and snatching up your information when you're on a public network, they also let you change your virtual location so that, yeah, you can watch UFC pay-per-views for like a sixth of the price, or you can watch content that's not available in the country where you live in. And I will give you a perfect example of this. In the US, you can only access the WWE Network on Peacock, and it's a little bit different, right? So if you love that old classic style of the WWE Network and a menu that was much easier to navigate, just change your virtual location to a spot that still has the WWE Network and boom, that's it, you're in. So if you go to nordvpn.com slash CVV, check out the deal they've got going on right now, 335 per month, plus one extra month when you sign up right now. It's nordvpn.com slash CVV. And, and if there was any sort of animosity between WCW and WWF fans in the, in the Attitude Era, the internet wasn't what it is now. Right. So it definitely wasn't but as there was, loud as what we're seeing. Yeah, yeah. I think that the the actually the um this that situation probably because when I remember it, you know, you you know, I mean, again, I mean, in some ways, it's it's not quite as stupid because when when WCW was winning the ratings, I mean, it was like, oh, you know, Ted Turner bought the ratings. You know, what I mean, almost like, you know, like that, that they stole the election from Trump type of thing. Right. I mean, right. that was the stuff that I would read. And I go like, that's freaking ridiculous. <laughs> now, like with the WCW, with the AEW and W, I don't hear people say like, oh, you know, they're they're buying ratings. I mean, I I have heard like this, the thing, oh, Tony Khan buys all the tickets and gives them all away, you know, and, and that was, you know, even from WWE wrestlers at first, when they first had their first um, when AEW first had their lines of success and they were doing really, really well coming out of the coming out of the gate 
you know, they would say that. And it's like, look, if, if there were tons of freebies, no, we would find out about it immediately because one of the things with is people will tell you, Hey, there's all these freebies out there right now, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like that kind of stuff. Um, it's, it's, um, you know, but people are going to say it like, like people are going to say that because they're going to be on, on, you know, yeah. The tribalism is, is, Oh, the tribalism, Dave. It's so bad. It's so it's, bad. It's it's so bad. I know. I know. Yeah. Like I I don't know why we can't all just agree that, hey, we are wrestling fans. We enjoy watching pro wrestling. And whatever letters or words are attached to that, whether it's AEW, New Japan, WWE, Impact, the list goes on and on and on. We're all wrestling fans here. Well, some people grew up um a certain way. I mean, I, I remember when I was a kid. And, um, you know, they formed like the ABA and, um, you know, American Basketball Association and, and rival sports leagues like the NHL had rivals, you know, not not so much like in football because the NFL was so dominant and nobody else sure. really competed, but where they would take the top stars. And, and I guess this happened a little bit with the um, USFL where, where um, you know, like a top star would leave and the, the fans would be furious at the top star for leaving like you're a traitor you know, to make, you know, and usually they were offered way, way more, more money to go to the lower league or the, the fledgling league and, and the player. And it's just like, you know, they just wanted those leagues to go away because they didn't want this type of thing to happen. Even though it was, if you really like the sport, it's the greatest thing. There's new ideas with a new league and it opens up more jobs and you know, that it's, it's a good thing. But I, and I think that what happened was, you know, you had a generation where, where WWF was so dominant and all of a sudden there were little chinks in the armor and, and AEW did much better than most people expected. Yeah. And then there was a thing of denying it. And now WWF turned it, WWE's turned it around and more yeah. power to them for doing it. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I have never had any issues with somebody doing well, you know? Yeah. And I mean, I mean, it's, it was funny because the most stuff, the most negative stuff that I would get every week. And I was not the only one is when you list the ratings. And if, um, when AEW was doing good, it was really toxic, you know, from people trying. And now where AEW is still doing good, but it's not doing what it was. Um, you know, now it's like they're failing, they're dying. And it's like, look, like last week, they were number six of every show on cable and entertainment and number 11 overall yeah. for the week, you know, and like what number three for the night. And it's like, this is great numbers, you know, and people going like, I can't get a million. And it's like, no. Number one, that 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 total viewer number doesn't really matter to people these days. And even if it did, I mean, the number of households that get cable is so far down. Like I told people, oh. like, a million people when AEW started would be seven hundred eighty thousand today because of the loss of the homes, and mm-hmm. they beat seven eighty. And even if they didn't, whatever place you're in, you know what I mean. This number, you know, as cable dwindles, you know, as more and more people don't get cable because they're watching other things, whether it's Netflix or whatever, you know, the, um, you know, the, the numbers will dwindle. WWE has gone up, which is incredible in this timeframe. And that's the thing. If, if WWE had stayed even, that's a big plus because everybody else is going down 20%, which is, which is scary because then what happens 10 years from now with all these declines and, um, you know, with the money, you know, then that, that is the one scary thing is, but there'll be money from somewhere else. You know, I mean, like there'll be money from, streaming companies that are looking to get a foothold and AEW is a good one and WWE is a great one for for you know any company because you got a built-in audience and very few people are talking about how much money uh that youtube is making for wwe like wwe i think is the number five most subscribed channel on youtube they're probably making if i had to guess with my knowledge of youtube they're probably making close to like a million dollars a day just in google adsense revenue yeah i don't think that's right only because their revenue would it'd have to come up on the books and it's not even a line item on the books. They are mm-hmm. making money though. I mean, it is successful, but like when they do all of these breakdowns of where the money is, um, you know, they don't list. Um, I mean, there's, they, they don't list YouTube revenue anywhere compared to say, you know, arena revenue or obviously sure, TV yeah, revenue yeah. or, or pay-per-view revenue or whatever. So it's, it's, I mean, it is a significant number, but it's not like in the pantheon of, of numbers, for for since WWE is, is public in the pantheon of numbers, it's not the game changer that say one show in Saudi Arabia is, which is a game changer. That's a sure. crazy. That's a crazy number. Although the amount of eyeballs that are watching it on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok that are not factored into the TV ratings are oh are oh, oh 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 oh. 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, they're figured differently. Like, you can't go like, oh, 22 million people watch this clip. I mean, it could yeah. be the same person watching it 20 times. But if you just go and say, you know, and, and people don't really understand TV ratings, just an example. Like, I'll just go with, oh, uh, yeah. with, with SmackDown, right? So, so let's say SmackDown did uh, 2.4 million viewers. I'm throwing out a number. I don't have the number yet for Friday as we record this. But I'm just to say 2.4 million. Sure. That's not, that's 2.4 million on average for two hours. It's probably if you factor in DVR viewership and people who watch like 10 minutes, five minutes, 30 minutes, they're watching it, but you know, they're not watching it the whole show start to finish. You're really talking about well over 5 million viewers and that's well, just television. And, and it's also, you, it's just a guess with the way that Nielsen rating boxes actually work with one box representing a 10,000 people that yeah, live yeah, in that yeah, zip yeah, code. Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. so stupid. They're, they're, they're estimates. Yeah, but, but over the course of a year or even over the course of a month, it's pretty, it's pretty valid. And it's Maybe. not perfect. It's, Maybe. It's, I mean, I don't know why we can't, we're all getting our cable digitally. Why can't we just check a box that says, sure, report what I watch back to whoever. And... Well, well, I, I, I used to get numbers from, from one of the cable companies. I don't anymore where it was like, like literally, but you couldn't, you know, like there, the way it's like, who was tuned in for how many minutes sure. to the stations? It was perfect, except you don't know how many people are watching per thing, per but, we, but absolutely per set. And I will say that, you know, so these are perfect numbers and and, and it was not 35,000 homes. It was millions of homes, the system that, you know, this that, that covered it, that I was getting this many million homes. Hmm. Um, and the numbers... I mean, I, I mean, like for wrestling, the numbers were pretty consistent with as far as, you know, like when it would. But there were weeks when when I would get a number because I was getting the number before the ratings came out and the, where my number would be up five, 10 percent and the TV rating would be down five, 10 percent. Hmm. And granted, this is only one system. And um, but still it was way more homes. So it's like I most weeks it was consistent, like you go up in one, you go up in another. But it wasn't perfect. Some yeah. weeks, some weeks it was I'd look and go, oh, hey, you know, um. AW is going to be up this week and they would be down or WWE is going to be up this week and it was down. But, you know, eight, eight, nine times out of 10, it was pretty consistent. But the one thing that I do know from comparisons is that NBA versus wrestling numbers um, on the system, you know, as far as what I would get, um, NBA was so far ahead of wrestling as compared to the TV ratings on the same night. And I don't know the answer as to why, hmm. but that was consistent when I would see like NBA versus versus raw, you know, like raw might be in the ratings, but the NBA number that I would get for households watching was, was way higher than, hmm. than Nielsen had. So I don't, you know, again, why hmm. that is or whatever, I yeah. don't know. I feel like whenever you put an opinion out that, people there's always so much backlash for the things that you say and i'm <laughs> i'm curious when did you stop listening to all the haters um i don't know that i ever did but i mean i respond more than i probably should but like i respond you know i always think i'm responding because i'm trying to you know explain you know why this you know premise is wrong and use math and things like that and i think that the majority watching or, or watching this will go okay you know we learned something from this and there will be some who will refuse to learn and and i just basically block them and move on you, know, you get you basically get one chance you oh hey i didn't think of it that way that's a great response oh you know like whatever you know if it's some a negative thing you know trying to double down and it's like okay you're not interested in learning that's fine and i, mm -hmm. I don't have time um so, you know, but, and sometimes, you know, you, you read it and you go, Hey, it's a good point of view. You know, you learn, you can, you can learn, you have to learn from things like that. But a lot, a lot, a lot of it is, is bad faith. And a lot, a lot, a lot of it is not even people who, you know, sometimes I'll look and go like, you don't even believe what you're writing. You're just saying it to, to get a response. And that's like a waste. Well, there's a lot of people that go, well, you said this last week, Dave, and that thing didn't happen. Ha! You don't know anything. <laughs> you know, like uh, you know, the what, for the raw, the plans for raw last night were different in the morning than they were at, when they were when the show went off on. You know, and that's <laughs> that's a normal that's a normal thing. Um, yeah, you know, whatever. Some, you know, I mean, uh, things. You know, I mean, it's like 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 uh, you know, if you ever read a book by a wrestler, um, you know, you'll learn about plans changing. You know, people make fun of oh, you claim plans change when they didn't, and it's like I will, you know. I don't even use that term. That's like something that people made up that, oh, you always say this. And it's like, I rarely say it. 
but but plans change. Have you ever read a book by a wrestler or you ever talked to wrestlers, um, you know, in any company and every company, you know, things happen and, and it's constantly, there's constant movement and change and differences in philosophies and, you know, angles that you're building up for a month. And then in the, you know, you, they tweak and the fan reactions different or the owner just goes, ah, I want to go in a different direction. Yeah. Or somebody gets hurt. I mean, it's, it's an evolving, you know, it's an evolving thing. I remember the first time I was backstage and also the first time I was in a production meeting, I went, oh, wow. I, th I thought I knew a lot about wrestling, but actually being here and seeing how the sausage is made made me go, oh man, I had no clue what the inner workings actually look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, the thing is that you know, people are, are spitballing ideas back and forth and you know, there's, idea there's a million ideas that get pitched you know, that, that never happen. And I always try to say, like, you know, I always try to use the qualifier and then people go, oh, you're you're trying to, you know, qualify. And it's like, yeah, nothing in wrestling, nothing happens till it actually happened. Yeah, yeah. that's the nature. That's what I like. Like I would always say it's like until it happened, it hasn't happened. I mean, it could be the plan for six months, but until it happened, it, it hasn't happened. Yeah, I, I, I think one of those big ones was there was a ton of talk about is Cody Rhodes actually going to leave AEW? Is he actually going to go back to WWE? That was such a huge storyline. Where did you sit on that as the news was starting to break? I mean, I knew it right away because it's all obvious. I mean, like, like, um, um, you know, like I, I didn't know the day he made the call, um, but I knew several, just a few days later, you know, when they had the meeting and the lawyers were involved and I kind of heard, you know, he's leaving and, and, it made sense, even though, of course, he's going to deny he's going to WWE. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, there were always like, oh, it may fall through or whatever. You know, it was kind of like, you know, once the break was made, he's going to WWE. And I mean, he told his friends he wasn't, or at least some friends. But even then, I know it's like, look, it's Cody and he's protecting the business, you know, in his mind because he wants to do the surprise and everything like that. And that's just the nature of the beast. But I mean, as far there was never, I mean, I always presumed he was going to wwe and i knew when the wrestlemania lineup was made you know when seth rollins had no opponent you know yeah. that, that was that that was cody rhodes i mean i you know i said it may not happen and there may be things this day you know we're a little weaker than that day and stuff like that but in the end i mean that was you know like that was that was how it was unless something big happened that was how it was going to end up and i don't know that that ever wavered other than people trying to deny it to throw you off sense there was always talk like when someone would get released from WWE, it would always immediately be like, are they going to sign with AEW? Are they going to AEW? And I said, one day someone's going to leave AEW and go to WWE. And, and like, I know that's not being talked about at that time, 2020, mm -hmm. but it's going to happen one day. Of course, of course it was. But it was shocking when that first person was Cody Rhodes. Uh, yeah. Um, I think in some ways it was, um, I was a little surprised, but I mean, the one thing was when the renewal wasn't done, you know, cause, cause Tony had an option on Cody to renew the contract like he did with the young bucks and, and others. Um, and when January 1st happened and there wasn't a renewal, I mean, that was, and he was out of contract. I mean, to me, that was very interesting. Yeah. Even then, I didn't think he was going to WWE. And, um, you know, I mean, I had contact with him and he was always like, well, we're, we are negotiating. And then, you know, all of a sudden it was kind of like, yeah, weeks are going by. I mean, but it was the assumption it, we're going to work it out. And then all of a sudden it was like, I wasn't hearing that anymore. And that's when it was like, you know, I'm, you know, something happened, which obviously Vince flew down to meet him is what happened. And, um, you know, and then it became um, different and, you know, he, he accepted the offer and, um, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, um, man, what a, what a, what a great move that was for all concerned. Not, not, not AEW, but for, um, but for Cody, I mean, Cody became a much bigger star, um, than he would have had he stayed and WWE. I mean, I thought that like he would help them a decent amount, but it was way more than I thought. I mean, the, the being the first guy to make that jump, um, and being a good talker really helped too. But, um, you know, it was the right place at the right time and instinct and everything like that. And um, I mean, I I think he he played it well for him, you know. Oh, I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, if, and, and if he had never left, he'd, he'd never be in this spot.
if he'd stayed there, he'd have been mid card guy. It, every I mean, he had already made it so he can't wrestle for the AEW championship. So like that was a it was a, it was a weird setup for whatever his future was going to be in AEW. That was um, yeah, I think they were. I, I I never could figure out that angle why they did that because um, I think it was at the time um that he didn't want to be criticized for being in power and then sure. being world champion. So he put the step in that he was never, you know, basically telling everyone, look, I'm never going to be world champion because I'm in power and I'm not going to be what his father was always criticized of being. I think right. that, I think that that actually was a negative to um, the young bucks, Kenny Omega and Cody was how dusty was viewed by being the booker and always putting himself on top. So they were, going to come in and lose before they were established. Like there was, um, I think that they lost too much early on. And, and Tony, I think felt the same way because when he took over booking, one of the things he said, is like, you know, those guys wanted to lose way more than I wanted them to lose. And, and mm. he allowed them to do that. And I think like the thing, especially with um, the young bucks and, and Omega, but Cody too, is that for, you, you know, you're the million dollar player, so to speak. So you guys need to be up, 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 up. And then when your TV, you know, they are wrestling stars to the grassroots, but they were not television stars. So when you get to be television stars, then you put other people over. But they were, you know, I think they were so, so you know, cognizant of the idea of if we keep winning when we start, people resent us. And, you know, and, yeah. and in today's in, in today's fan base, it was going to happen. Like there were, if, if Cody had been world champion and won it, there'd be people going like, oh, he's just like his father, right? And that's not a good thing. And that's not what he wanted is that viewpoint, you know, especially because yeah. he always wanted to be a baby face. Yeah. And, and in AEW, you know, stuff happened and and uh, the people, you know, the fan base, not not all the fan base, but enough, enough in every city that you could hear it, you know, um, just really wanted him to turn. And sometimes the fan base does that. And then it's like you... Then they get mad that you don't turn. And yeah. and should you? You know, sometimes it works. You know, with Roman Reigns, it worked. They never did it with Cena because Cena's merchandise sold so much. And I think it would have sure. been a huge mistake to do it with Cena, even though it's like, oh, he's what a failure he is. He's getting booed in all these buildings as your top baby face. And it's like he's selling more tickets and he's selling more merchandise. He is anything but a failure. Crowd reacts. You know, I mean, if the crowd was silent, it would be sad, you know, yeah. but if you get the crowd going, um and and the cheers and the boos are very very loud and they're fighting each other that's a good thing it's not a bad thing with knowing what you know and the contacts that you have how do you know when you can trust your sources um it's why you try to talk to as many people as possible um which you know the funny thing is is um in it, it, it it's 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 not so much trust um as much as framework everyone okay. is going to give you how they view it and so it's it's not the information is usually i mean sometimes there's absolute i mean you talk to two people and you know one will say this and, and it's and it's total contradiction and then it's just like well these are the two sides of the story that's it um you know an outright lie is going to come out most of the time pretty quick now i mean even even back in the 90s you know be uh, maybe a week now it's actually you know even quicker so you know you're gonna know but yeah. you know and and but it's like it's like it's more of a framework of how you know everyone views things in a certain way it's not so much a lie as much as hey this is how i see it sure um, and and you know and a lot of it is just like when it comes to booking it's all you know, it's instinct yeah. and it's philosophy and there is a right or wrong, but the right or wrong is, is business going up or is business going yeah. down. Yeah. But, but you don't know that going in, you know? So yeah. it's like, you kind of have to follow the, the patterns. And sometimes, you know, if you're got a lot of experience watching this, you know, you're going to be right more than you're going to be wrong, but you're always going to be surprised. And that's why you always have to learn. I mean, there's yeah. people, there's people who learned and were very, very smart in a certain generation. Yeah. And they have no concept of this generation because the fan base is different. The circumstances are different and what people want in, you know, is different. And so, you know, what they wanted three years ago, isn't the same as today. Sure. What what, and, and things that were really, you know, things that were new and unique when they become the same, 
they're not new and unique anymore. They were. And it's like, that's always, it's always going to change, you know, and, and, and the stuff that's going to get attention is going to be the, the new and unique and the new and unique is going to be an affront to what was previously there. So people who wanted to stay the same are going to get mad at the new and unique, but it's a new and unique that can either be a spectacular failure or a giant success, but it ends up when things are successful, it's usually the lifeblood of the success. Hmm. I want to talk about your rating system because obviously ratings in wrestling are subjective, but what goes into it for you? What goes into rating a match for you? I just watch the match and when it's over, it's kind of like, what did they accomplish? Um, you know, I mean, did it look good? Did the crowd get off on it? Um, I mean, sometimes the crowd will get off on it because the two personalities are so strong. Sure. And and I don't necessarily think I I I'll just give you examples is um Nick Bockwinkle, who who was a brilliant guy. And he would always say, like, if you start the match and the crowd's going crazy for the ring entrance, and that's the hottest part of the match, then how great was the match really? Even if the match is much hot, hotter than a match that starts at zero and you build it up to a level in the entire match, build, 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 which to him and to me as well is like a, the most successful matches. You start at this point, you build, 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 and you peak at the finish. That's, mm -hmm. you know, which means having a good finish. It doesn't, um, but sometimes that, you know, it involves like, you know, a lot of people think the most brilliant finishes, you know, all the referee bumps and the run-ins and all that. And if it works for the crowd, then that's fine. But a lot of people also hate those finishes because they want the clean finish. So they get mad and it's like, <clears throat> sometimes if it doesn't work and people boo at the end or, or um, groan, I think groan is worse than booing, mm. but um, you know, just go or, you know, bullshit or, or, you know, whatever. Then to me, the finish didn't work. Um, but you know, it's like, it's, it's certainly it's about crowd reactions, but it's not like this. It's not necessarily decibel levels, although that's a big part of it for sure. Um, you know, if you do a lot of unique, cool things and, um, you know, just do things out of the pattern, do things that kind of like shock you, like you're, I think the one thing with, with, it's like, if you're expecting something and then they do something different and go, Oh my God, if they do, they can do that real well, like surprise the audience in a good way where they react. I like that, mm -hmm. you know, um, rather than just pattern, but pattern when it works, simple pattern is not wrong either. And, you know, it's like, at the end of the day, it's just kind of like what's working and what's getting the crowd going. Um, and, you know, just execute, execution mm -hmm. some of it. I mean, it's, it's a complicated thing, but it's, and, but in other ways, it's not complicated. You just kind of watch it. And like when it's over and where the audience is at that moment and, and how it's built and everything like that, it's like, oh, whatever. And I mean, I know like tons of people and we're all, you know, like we're all kind of close, you know, when, but one of the things it's like, it's like, I think people, um, to me, like, I'll just be an example. It's like, if, if I'm sitting at a show and my best friend is sitting with me and he'll go like, would you give the match? And I go four because I thought it was four and a half. The general thing is, is okay. We agreed. It was a great yeah, match. Yeah. It was a great match. You're never going to be like, like my thing, you know, it's like, you're not supposed to agree with, four and a quarter but if you think it's a two then then we disagreed and there's nothing wrong with that either it's just what we did was disagree but sometimes people go like oh you know why'd you give this four and three quarters and not five and it's like well if i gave it four and three quarters and you gave it five and it's fine it means we agreed a hundred percent we agreed that's a quarter of a star of course that's you know it's like a movie critic um you know where you it's just the same thing if you're if you're within a half star you agreed if you're within a star you're pretty much agreeing you know, if you're two stars apart, you're disagreeing. And yeah, the, the, right difference with the, movie, the difference with the movie critics, though, is you go on Rotten Tomatoes and there's 93 ratings for a movie. When you're talking about pro wrestling matches, it really comes down to like, there's sure there's some people rating them, but your rating matters a lot. Yeah, well, I've tried. I, I try to do I try to do a fair job. You know, I mean, I think that, that that's um it's not like, again, like what I do to me ratings, it's, 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 um, it's a recommend, you know, it, it, in the end, it's a recommendation. This is how bad you should go out of your way to see the match. If you didn't see the match, that's how I'm mentally looking at it. But, um, I also think that it's not nearly as important as so many other things that I do. I think the business analysis is, if 
by sure. far the most important thing. And people will get all hung up on the ratings aspect. Yeah. It's just like, you know, you're not even reading the issue with the, the key stuff in mind. You're ignoring the stuff or people who don't read and then get mad at the ratings. It's like, you know, read, you know, and learn. There's so much to learn. Yeah. And you're just getting hung up on a quarter of a star in the ratings. And it's just like, that's kind of like a waste of time. Well, people get hung up on the ratings when you look at specific things. Like I was blown away to learn you've only given one five-star rating to a TNA match. And I was like, come, come on. Have you, I mean, I, I was blown away to learn Kurt Angle's never had a five-star match. Yeah, like, but he's, had a, he's had tons of four and three quarters, which is basically the same thing. It's just like the it's little- It's not the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. I think anything over, to me mentally, anything over four is is great. And um, so if you say I've never given Kurt Angle a four star match, you know, whatever. No, you've but, given him plenty of four star matches. But, but, like, but I mean, five, it's like, it's like, yeah, could you say that uh, the Chris Benoit match at Royal Rumble was a five star match? I was pretty damn close. But I like said Kurt Angle know? versus Samoa Joe in TNA. Hell yeah. You think so? I, I never I, I, I will say I was I, I, I thought there were, gr you know, great Kurt Angle Samoa Joe matches in TNA. I never saw one as a, as a five-star match. And I mean, it's like, wow. whatever. I mean, five stars to me is like, that's like freaking you know, elite, elite, elite level, you know, like, um, you know, it, it's, it's, and you know, I don't know that, you know, again, I'm you're arguing a quarter of a star or whatever, but it's like, I, I never thought Although about it. I will it. say, whether I, I mean, I, I, I probably quarter or four and a half, that five star is a benchmark. That's, that's a big, that's a well, big benchmark for people. Yeah, well, it shouldn't be because if you're at four and three quarters, that means I'm thinking that you should be considered for match of the year. So, um, but why yeah, why not give it the five star? Why not give Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania 25 five stars? Um, there was, you know, I mean, at that time when I watched, I mean, there's a couple of couple of things. I mean, number one, when I when I watched it, I thought this is pretty damn close. And whenever I say pretty damn close, that's a four and three quarter star match. I got to be like 100%. Okay. So, and I mean, two of the greatest wrestlers, I mean, literally after that match were just, you know, I mean, and this isn't, I'd already rated the match, but I just remembered, I mean, two, these are two of the all time greats. Sure. Called me up and go, you know, what did you think? And I go, I thought that match was freaking awesome. That match was fantastic. And it's like, you know, basically one was if I tried to do a match like that, if I did a match like that, I'd have to fight my way out of the dressing room because so many guys would have heat for me for killing everyone's finisher. Um, and, you know, I mean, and you could say that about a lot of other matches too, but, but it was a perspective. And then, um, you know, another one was just, um, you know, to, and, and I think subconsciously I, I thought the same thing when I watched Sean and Undertaker, the first one, which was great. And I almost did give it five stars. And some people think it's because of the dive, you know, spot that went wrong. It's like, nah, it really wasn't. It was, it was, I'm going to say, there was a predictableness to it mm. that I could feel. Like I knew what they were doing. And sometimes that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I, it was so long and I always knew what they were going to do. And it was mm. thrilling as hell. But it yeah. was not, it didn't give me that, oh my God, this was brilliant. It was like, okay, this is what they were doing. My turn, your turn. And and it worked. It was like, again, like, look, it, it one match of the year, I easily could have given it five stars. But whatever it was, you know, when it was over, it was like, I was debating. And I've done that at many matches. You know, I mean, um, you know, where it's kind of like, you know, like, is this four and three quarters or five? Well, that means it's four and three quarters when I say that. If I say five, no debate, then it's five. And, uh, you know, is it, is it just that you do you not like the style of WWE matches no. versus New Japan or versus um, 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 well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I think, you know, um, the certain dynamic aspects of it in, in the in the um, sense of. With with New Japan, the wrestlers are are technically so much better um, and they're also better at building the perfect time for the finishes. Well, they wrestle uh, a very and, and, different style, right? and they do, and they do a lot of cross ups where you you think you know, I mean, you think you know where they're going, and then they're not. They 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 take you and they twist you. And with WWE, it is different in the sense that it's built around repetitivism, re repetitiveness, and um, you know, you know, teaching the audience to pop for certain moves and then doing them. And mm -hmm. there's some cross up, but it's really about um repetitiveness and teaching people to pop for a certain 
thing. And then you do it over and over and over again. So they learn this is where we pop. And in Japan, it is, it certainly exists, but there is a lot more thought to going that one step deeper of this is where we're going and they're about to pop for this. So we're going to do this. And then they're going to pop even bigger. Hmm. And so that's kind of, um, I think that that's, you know, that and the tech, the, the better, the, they're, they're, they, they train in basics a lot better. So their stuff looks better. So there's always that aspect too. And they hit much harder. And I think that that adds to the realism aspect. Um, you know, the, I mean, it's just, you know, I mean, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's harder hitting. It's better technical. I mean, I'm talking at the top level. I'm not saying that there aren't guys in, in, in anywhere, in every company who do that or can do that, but it's, it's definitely more of a thing. And, um, you know, so that's probably where, um, you know, the new Japan matches will, you know, and, but again, like people who watch everything, you know, the, the new Japan matches usually end up getting, I mean, and in any of these, um, you know, not just me, but everyone, you can look at cage match or, you know, grapple when it existed or, or, you know, it was, it was, it was consistent. You know, I would look at some of those and go like, man, you know, um, unless it's like a historical WWE match at a WrestleMania, which, which I actually think that a lot of the mania matches because they're at mania kind of get overrated, but that's a good yeah. thing. It's a, it's actually a good thing that you don't have to do as much, but you're at mania. So it makes it a little bit more special. Um, that, um, aside from those, it's very difficult to see a WWE match near the top of those lists at the end of the year. Um, and, um, you know, but I mean, again, like, I had it's just it's fascinating to hear all this because it's 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 interesting look. yet yet like a example is like for years for years not not now because things changed but for years if you look at my ratings for 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 shows um my NXT ratings were higher than I mean it's funny when when the NXT W um, AEW thing was going on so my NXT shows during the takeover era were always the highest yeah because they consistently put on great matches and that's WWE product. You know, so it's not. But, but WWE as a whole, not NXT, only has nine five star matches in the entire history of WWE slash WWF. Yeah, and there was a stretch from ninety seven to two thousand eleven when there were no five star matches in WWE. I mean, that's I don't know if that just doesn't seem to add up to me. That's an interesting thing. I at the time, um, it was very very hard to get a five star match, and I mean, it still is. It's super hard. The only difference is is that guys are so much better now. Like, like if I look back at my um, at a match that I would have given five stars and I look back 30 years, I look at and there 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 are exceptions um, and they're usually, you know, like uh, in, in Japan, believe it or not. But um, but for the but for the but even in Japan, I mean, I've seen like, you know, matches that I'd given five stars that I would look and go like eh, it's a four and a quarter, four and a half star match today. You know, it's do like, you, do you do the reverse? Do you look at matches now and go, man, I get that four and a quarter, but that, that really is a five star match now. No, no. I mean, I think that if anything, it's, I think it's actually harder, but there's more of them because you have, you know, back then, um, you know, it, it was wrestlers had a different mentality in the sense of now they know it's like the mentality of going into a show used to be, um, you know, it wasn't, there wasn't as much drive to put on this incredible match, which says, and believe me, that has its good and it's bad because yeah. Because, like, again, when I watch an, an AEW big show, just an example, I feel like there's so many risks and it scares me, you know? And, and um, you know, like, one risk is, is in, you know, like, WWE, you might get one big risk spot in the match and it's memorable and everything like that. But when there's so many, like, when I watch a Darby or Sammy Guevara or somebody like that, and it's, it scares me, you know, like, the, 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 um, they, they, and that's one of the reasons why also the matches are, you know, getting these great crowd reactions because they're working for crowd reactions sure. and the crowd does react to it. Um, and younger, hungrier guys are going to do crazier and crazier things. And we've seen that. And, you know, it's, it's good and it's bad. You know, was there a, was there a point in the two thousands when it was, you know, you were tougher on ratings because I think, in the 2000s, 2000 to 2010, you only had seven five-star matches for that entire I didn't think there, decade. I didn't think there were as many great, the, the, the matches didn't. Did you just not watch TNA? I'm just so curious. Oh, TNA, I watched TNA religiously. Oh, man. I watched, I mean, I watched, oh, I watched every TNA pay-per-view. 
I saw, look, there were all kinds of four star matches back then. And, and I actually, you know, if you look back on that, the, the different, you know, you'll see it. Five star match is like, I mean, to me, five star match, even today, should be like, okay, this is probably going to win match of the year. And when I look at that, you know, back then, you know, I mean, like now, yeah, there's more because it's just like there's, there, there's so much and it gets over so big in the sense of, um, you know, um, because guys are, guys are working for that. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're, they're, but even, even now, I mean, there's, you know, I'm, I'm going to hear a lot more about, uh, you know, this match should be five stars. And it's like, to me, it's like, if, if I don't think that this is going to be somewhere pretty damn high in the ballot for match of the year. Yeah. then it's not a five-star match, especially now, or even, even then, I mean, granted there were years that, that the four and three quarter or four and a half star matches one match of the year. And that would never, you know, well, that could happen now too, you know, because again, but what about like, what about the list of people who never had five star matches? I, I mean, don't I'm even sure, worry. I'm sure about you're it. familiar with with the people. I don't, the wor- I don't even worry about it because it's like, but like, it, the, I mean, it, these are legends: Eddie Guerrero, Triple H, Randy Savage, Triple, Kurt Triple, Angle, and it's crazy. Rob Van Dam. How many four star matches? It's four stars is what you should be looking at, not five. Five means like it's it's a completely different animal but, but then you got someone like Kenny Omega who has 10 five or better matches yeah so but then if you're like well if fours are what matters then fours is what matters you know i mean like hey Kenny Omega and Will Ospreay and Misawa you know those guys yeah but they're freaking incredible i mean Absolutely. they're incredible they're incredible and they were put in positions to have those matches where most of these guys kurt as an example i mean if kurt was put in a position with a Misawa, if that's a guy, or maybe a Kobashi or whatever. I mean, he did, he do, did with Chris. Um, and you know, I, I, like I said, I came close with, with, um, the, uh, the, um, you know, but it's like, I've always thought Kurt Angle was great. He's got tons of four star matches, four and a half star matches, whatever. First four star match with Matt Morgan, but it's like the reason he doesn't have a five, it's what am I biased against him? I, I probably, voted for him in the hall of fame years early it's sure. just it's a certain match and maybe maybe he never had the perfect opponent maybe i don't know I, I don't know it's not i don't like think and go like oh you know he's kurt angle he deserves one and nobody deserves one when people go like why isn't this match five stars i always like man it's like there's never it's like what it, what what didn't it have and it's like if it's over four it had it yeah. So, so when you're talking about five, five has to be when this thing's over, I'm going like, yeah, this, this if it was in the past, I would go, this wouldn't match of the year. And now it's, it's got to be, man, if this was, if this was, uh, this should be talked about for match of the year, and even four and three quarters, it means it should be talked about. And a five now would be a match where I would go like, this would have won match of the year every, you know, most years when I was a kid. Because, but I mean, WWE's had nine in their entire history. Yeah. AEW and, has and had see, 21 it, in four years. AEW's wrestlers work much harder to, to um, in that style. CMLL, which is my favorite style of wrestling, by the way, or was. I mean, I like all styles. See, how many does CMLL have? I don't know. I'd have to pull that stat off. I, I, it, might be, it, it, might, it might I don't know. It might be zero. And um, I mean, and because the CMLL style that I love is not something conducive. It's, it's absolutely it conducive. Is, I to, think to it board. is zero. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. My favorite style of, uh, from, from childhood. Wow. Okay? And, and, and the reason is, is because the CMLL style is conducive to four star matches, but there's something that makes mm-hmm. a five star match that their style is not conducive to. And I would say the same thing about WWE's style in general, although there are exceptions, sometimes it just, the right thing and the right magic happens and it is that but nxt had that all the time i yeah. would give any i there's many nxt matches because i think there's nine well then there's your answer you know and that's the same company but but it's the style that they're working for you know the wwe the nxt style was a lot more based on um like what we talked about um trying new things um yeah you know, yeah do, you know taking risks do, yeah yeah taking not, not not necessarily injury risks but trying new yeah. things or just going and 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 you know giving guys more time on, in main events or giving or matching guys up that you know are going to deliver a great match which which you know was part of that thing whereas with wwe that's you know you're you're doing feuds and you're doing it's it's just a different thing it's not really mm-hmm. conducive um 
you know, it's, it's like, it's, it's not as conducive to a five-star match. It's really not conducive general. to the style of match that you like, right? It's, um, no, I, I mean, mean I, I like, New, I, New I, Japan I, has, I, New Japan has 82 five-star or better. Yeah. Matches. Well, that, I mean, I know. And, and he has look, one, yeah, WWE well, is nine. Like, it just yeah. seems like you, you know, there's a certain style of match that you prefer. And that's, well, I mean, totally the, way, okay. the, the way that, the, the way that they build in climax. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It broke my heart. My favorite match of all time is Rock versus Hogan, WrestleMania 18. But that's a different yeah. style match. That's that was all heat. All, I mean, it was great for what it was. That crowd reaction is unmatched. It's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. A, it was a three star match. Yeah. Dave. Well, I mean, that was you know. Can we can we right now make that maybe a four star match? Look, it's like, we're can talking we go about back matches. and change. We're it? matches from decades ago. I think that probably, you know, I mean, like, you know, maybe, maybe we should, but I don't look back. I'm looking at the future. Yeah. You know? But I mean, like, yeah, it's probably, I'm, I was probably wrong on that one in, in some ways. I mean, he, you know, he was, of course, but it's all about memories. You know, it's like um, that match, you know, if two other guys did that same match, move for move, right? It'd have been yeah. nothing special. But, you know that's part of it, and maybe that's what I was going like. Okay, if the if any two other guys, I mean, but yeah, should it have been four, probably. Sure, why not? If you watch, but, I mean, match... it's like whatever, whatever. You know, it's like I, when I watched it the day I watched it, it was very predictable to me, and maybe that was the problem. You know, that I I knew everything they were going to do when they did it, and which isn't necessarily bad either because that is always you know whatever. I don't know. If you watch a match live, do you then go back and watch it? I try. Broadcast? I don't always do that. I try because absolutely not only live where you're sitting in the building. Yes. Okay. If you're in, if you're up in the upper deck. Yeah. You will. Who's sitting things, in front of you even who's sitting behind you. That all plays into it. Everything plays into it. If you were in the upper deck, you're going to notice certain things yeah. and you're not going to notice little subtleties that you are if you're in the front row or if you're watching on television. So it's, it's, there's things that carry bigger um, to the big arena and there's things that carry better to the small arena. And I've seen matches where, I mean, you like, you, you know, you'll, you know, like, yeah, I'll watch generally speaking when I'm in the arena. Um, I think the matches are not as good as when I watch them and, 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 and mm. you know, on television and it should be like that because television should enhance. Yes. So, I, that's why, like, again, I don't really like to go to, I do go to some AEW pay-per-views, but I really don't like to judge them. The last one I did, but I don't like to judge them based on being in the arena um, because you get a different feel than, than the thing. And with WWE, I really try, um, you know, I mean, I, I religiously watch those things at home. Um, I don't go to WrestleMania because it, it, the, the very thing is, is I'd have to go and rewatch that again because... I went to um, the, the one year I went to the two Tokyo domes and then I came home and the matches were so much better on TV than they were. Mm. Well, and they were great live. Don't get me wrong, but it's just certain things like you're far away. You don't feel the hard hitting as much, you know, and that's, that's conducive to the Japanese style is the hard hitting. You know, I remember there was one, one match and I think it was, um, might've been, um, God, I don't remember who it was Goto and Shibata might've been, I'm not sure, but I, it was, um, it was a Goto match. Oh, it was Goto and Kent, actually. And I, you know, in the arena, I was like, I'm in the, the, the suites. And it's like, you know, they're beating the shit out of each other, but we're not really hearing it because the sound doesn't travel well in that building. Yeah, so yeah. I thought, match is all right, you know, and whatever. And people going, what? You missed, you missed. And I watched it and I go, oh, I see what you, what you mean. Mm -hmm. It's way, way better. And sometimes but, commentary adds so much to a story. It should. Yeah. Kevin Kelly's great. That's another one. Kevin mm -hmm. Kelly's great. But, but yeah. um, Kevin Kelly's great. The, Michael Cole makes things feel really big, too, I think now um he can he can maybe that's um, just my opinion i mean jr J jr was really good at at doing that i mean they was all, very they, good they, at hyperbole they you know, they, like, they all were you know you know um it was funny because um with new japan and all japan when they announced in japanese the japanese announcers by their emotions because i did not know the words but by mm -hmm. their emotions i i would um you know people even even now people will go to me today and go that they would rather watch the Japanese commentary than the English commentary with new Japan, which for me is like, dude, that's Kevin Kelly. He's this great yeah. storyteller. But yeah. I understand that because the Japanese, the way that the way the match flows and the way the announcers flow, it's really exciting. Mm. Um, and I think that they, 
I think that the announcing, even when you don't know the words, absolutely enhances the matches. Yeah. I think one of the biggest shifts over the last definitely 10 years is how many people can now make money from pro wrestling. Like back in the day, it was the people that were working in it. Now it's the people working in it, talking about it, selling merchandise around it. Like, and that's such a big change here. And what's come off the back of that is so many people want to be wrestling content creators. They want to work in wrestling media. Yeah. What's the advice that you have to someone who wants to start to work? I'm probably I'm, I'm probably the worst person for advice because <laughs> because because my advice is read 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 a ton learn history and I don't know how important that is to today, mm. but I mean like to me it's like when I started it's like all I wanted to learn was because the same was all sports all I wanted to learn was history all I wanted to learn from the you know again like I was very very lucky that that um, a couple promoters um, when I started were really good to me when it came to teaching and, and it wasn't even necessarily teaching just, just when you learn from discussing and it was kind of like why this works and why this doesn't work and why this thing that you think is going to work won't work hmm. and it was a great framework and a lot of and it was very very beneficial yet at the same time times change you know in the sense of like lessons that i learned then and they were absolutely valuable lessons and they're still valuable in the sense that you have to consider them that doesn't mean the same today. Like there was a period where you don't want to really put two baby faces against each other because even when they're there, they just don't have the right heat. And it's not going to draw. Well, that doesn't even matter now. You put the right sure. match together and the fans are going to buy it and you put, you know, um, and, 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 you know, I mean, there's, and there's, and, and again, now, now, now the lure is like the name of the show. It's really not like we got to peak this angle and we peak this angle. We're going to get this big house. You know, it's like, if you, I mean, I've seen them, um, do really huge matches on like a lower level pay-per-view show and it does a lower level pay-per-view show number so it's like to, you know now it's like wrestlemania royal rumble SummerSlam, right so that's it's it's just a it's just a different dynamic as far as what draws and everything like that but i think that one of the things you know it's like i want to just learn and learn and learn why mm. why fans come to see it and again in those days that was your draw you know your your lifeblood when you guessed right, you were up and what lessons that you learned from your mistakes, what led to bad houses? What did they learn from bad houses and things like that? And so I was like, so always wanting to learn that aspect because to me, wrestling was a business and the promoters, when you talk to them, it was always this house, that house what was the size of the house. It was always the right or wrong is what was the size of the house. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I really like this angle. <gasps> Didn't draw a big house was not a good gotcha. angle. You know what I mean? Oh, I, um, I don't like this guy. I don't think he's that good. Uh, this is his drawing record. If he mm. wasn't good, he wouldn't be drawing. And this is at the end of the day, that's the ultimate thing. It's like, if you can make it work, if you can, if you can, if you can get the fans to, you know, now it's about getting the fans to watch on television, but then it was to getting the fans to pay money for the event. Yeah. And it's like, what type of personality works and what are fans buying? And that changes constantly. You know, I mean, the eighties was all about muscles. Right. And then, um, you know, later, people were less concerned about muscles and it all became about action. There was a period when AEW started where I, where I would see great matches draw great numbers with people who should not have drawn great numbers because they didn't have the name value mm -hmm. and, 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 and stuff to do. So that also, as I expected and did happen when you start doing that over and over and over again, it becomes normal. And like today, Look, look, they had two incredible matches on Friday Rampage and nobody even talked about them two days later because we see those type of matches now constantly. So now it's not even, you know, I mean, like, a, you know, a, a great match that we would have, you know, um, one, one of the promoters, you know, told me, you know, like there are matches that if they were on TV, we would, would talk about for a month because they're so spectacular and we didn't get great matches on TV in the 80s and the 90s. And now we get, 10 of them eight to eight to 10 of them every single week and nobody talks about them the next day because it's so the standard has gotten so high yeah but by but by doing that you know i mean lance norm kind of said like when when every match is 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 great then what does a great match mean mm. you know it's like and and there's a and that's the thing and you can you 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 know it's like i, I i've even mentioned it to people sometimes it's like they, i don't think they really understand what i'm saying when i say this but it's like I don't mean that they've overdone great matches so they should stop. But what I mean is, is there's so many great matches that as far as moving business metrics, 
a great match isn't going to do it anymore. Um, even if you're, um, you know, like even if a guy that you don't expect, what was the match? There was the match with um, uh, Darby Allen and Orange Cassidy against uh, Quan and Toa Leona, I, th I think it was, um, a couple weeks ago, where it's like, I was so blown away by Toa Leona in that match. And if this would have been in the 1980s and somebody that you didn't know put on that performance, everybody would be talking about the next day, like, oh my God, big, agile, aggressive, hung in there with the stars and all this. And, but today there's like nothing you can do because people have seen so many, so many great matches. So to just, you know, you need, you know, your in-ring is not going, is only going to get you over to a certain degree. And now it's back to, it's almost back to who can, who can rock the mic. And so I think people kind of like need, you know, and there was a time where, you know, you, you could really, people were, would just appreciate you for your wrestling and, and there's people who do, but um, it's hard. It's hard to get over on wrestling when there is so much great wrestling and it's hard to move ratings. Yeah, is it that there's too much wrestling? Like every day of the week, you can, you can watch there's wrestling what, on TV. Well, of course there's too much wrestling because, but that's the nature of everything that, that, but is, that is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? It's a good thing economically because uh, the content creators make more money. Um, it's a good thing for fans in the sense that they have more product to choose from. It's a bad thing to try to keep up with it. It's it's good for wrestlers that they have more jobs, and it's bad because you don't. It's hard to stand out it, mm. because you go out there and go on TV and have a killer match, and um, you know somebody's going to follow you in private killer match fifteen minutes later. Mm. Um, I think. I mean, in, in, in WWF, you know, on Raw and SmackDown, I think to a degree, it's a little easier because they're not out there booking all one killer match after another, like, uh, like AEW would do. But still, I mean, just like a couple weeks ago, we had um, Santos Escobar and Mustafa Ali, you know, and I mean, they did as good as you're going to do in nine minutes. There's just some, spe some spectacular things. They worked, the crowd was into them. I mean, nobody talked about it the next day. Nobody yeah. even talked about the, you know, like I go, oh my God, what a, what a great match. And it was kind of like, and, and people, yeah, it was, but what is, is it, is it better than 10 other matches we saw that week? And, and it wasn't, you know, so like I said, it is so hard to get over and guys are going farther and farther for, and I would say less and less rewards. Mm. And that's, that's, so that's the sad part of it. Yeah. Is that, is that guys are, you know, and the one thing that I, the injury rate, bothers me because it's like it's one thing like when Mick Foley did this this thing he did okay he made his whole career off of that one match now guys will try to copy that and and they're just going to get injured you know um and so you know the high injury rate bothers me a lot mm. you know so um but you know it's guys who are just they're, they're trying to get over they're trying to get over on their spectacularness and because there's so much spectacularness, it's 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 hard to get over that way. And um, like I said, like for young guys, like I, I I would say, you know, obviously learn to make your wrestling look good, but really, 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 really work on your mic work and mm. and, and things like that. And 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 you know, because it. But even then, it's like only a couple guys get that chance to do the mic work. I mean, there are. But, but I think that's a great point. Like when you think of what some people would consider the greatest of all time, the rock stone cold, Steve Austin, uh, Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan. They weren't, I mean, the rock stone cold, they weren't great in the ring, but they were, they were pretty so damn good. good on the mic. They were pretty good. They were pretty, I, I, I mean, I consider the rock real good. I actually consider stone cold borderline great uh, in the ring. Um, but yeah, no, it was the right character at the right time. Yeah. And, um, and, gr and great on the mic, great at fantastic pushing the, story, on the mic. Forward, story forward, get it, great at getting you interested in the yeah. match. Well, that, that's, that's generally speaking, that's the most important thing is the mic work, generally yeah. speaking. There are, but then there's guys, um, you know, like, look, if you ask me like, you know, the best mic guys now, one of the best mic guys now to me is Eddie Kingston, who mm. doesn't really get a lot of mic time. And I think that Eddie Kingston can cut a promo with anyone. Um, but, uh, you know, um, you know, so, so, but at the same time, I think that, um, I don't know that people consider, you know, I, I mean, the fans definitely like him a lot. Sure. Absolutely. Um, so maybe he could be, you know, maybe he's a guy who could be used better. Yeah. I mean, I think when you talk about people who are great on the mic, MJF's name comes up. MJF's great time. on the mic. Of course, yeah. of course, of course. You know, I mean, there's some people, you know, um, but he's, his delivery um, and look, MGF works really hard on what he says, you know, I mean, punk the other night, what a, 
you know, the great delivery, you know, I mean, it's like, um, and, uh, you know, he had a purpose of what he wanted to say and, he, you know, people liked it and everything like that. Yeah. What do you think of Punk's return? In what sense? I mean, there's a million things I think about it, but. Um, yeah, I just feel at, like at, after, after at, what happened at the all out press conference, it was kind of like, oh my gosh, like, I, I don't know if he could ever come back. He's just aired his grievances with the boss sitting right next to him. Yeah, he, well, he got away with it because he can draw. If some, it was, if it was someone who couldn't draw, they'd never be back. Mm -hmm. But look, if conor mcgregor if the things i could name 20 things conor mcgregor did that he would not even be in ufc or floyd mayweather you know what i mean similar right like that yeah. but mike tyson you know what i mean it's like but when you can draw you know you will always get that chance i mean i know i mean i did not know 100 percent he would be back in AEW, but i knew he would be back wrestling somewhere you know i mean i know people in wwe you know it was just like you know they're not gonna take him and it's like you know, maybe yes, maybe no, but it was immaterial because Tony wasn't going to release him. But I mean, the thing is, is at some point, at some point, I thought he would be back and probably in AEW. Um, you know, it didn't happen exactly the way I expected, but it did happen. And, um, you know, it's because he can draw. And yeah. and um, a guy who has a history of drawing will, will always get that chance until, you know, the wheels are off are totally off. That's all. Yeah. Okay. A few more questions before we wrap this up. What's the, what's the best match you've ever seen live? Whoa, live. Um, that's a tough one. I used to say Toyota Yamada easily in 92 in, in all Japan women. Um, but since then, boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, Man, um, Kenny Omega and Tanahashi at the Tokyo Dome was way up there. Uh, MJF and Brian Danielson this year was way up there. Um, I'm trying to think what other ones. I sat in the same arena as you, and I watched, I think, one of the best matches I've seen in person, which was Cody versus Dustin. Cody versus Dustin was, show. it was, it was, a, that was an excellent match. Yeah. yeah Storytelling yeah. them. I mean, they're, Hey, I everyone had tears in their eyes when that match was over. My my son, my son was crying. The two girls next to me were crying. I was crying I, too. I, I, I was I was I was crying. Yeah. I would say if if you're looking at something that made you cry, um, the Toyota Yamada match that, that I watched would be there. And then um yeah. Misawa and Jumbo Saruta and Cody and Dustin. Yeah. Okay. Um, as far as I I mean, matches Emotions. that it's matches that made you cry. If that's if that's the thing. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, with like, all I, the, with all the wrestling that you watch and talk about, what do you do when you're not watching wrestling, Dave? Oh man, that's, I watch way too much. Look, I hang out, I hang out, you know, um, great, great relationship. I love my kids, you know, and, uh, that's what I, it's basically it is. Do you have any other like random hobbies that we'd be like, man, I, I have never no, knew I, that I, I have collected I, coins. No. I mean, I, I, I would, if this was not so time consuming and if it was <laughs> like in the nineties, I had many hobbies, but, um, you know, and I would be, I, you know, I cover, you know, I'd be, I'd, I'd follow the NFL. I was, I was a big, big NFL fan growing up, big NBA fan growing up, but the time isn't there. So it's basically, um, it's wrestling my kids and, you know, and my... some UFC peppered in there, right? Yeah. I watch, I watch UFC. I follow it. You know, like, look, I grew up, I I grew up with, I say grow up, but I mean, I, I was the first reporter ever to cover UFC. Wow. And I covered it with pro wrestling for years and years and years. And I worked Yahoo and I worked at MMA fighting covering UFC. So I've invested many, many, many decades, you know, three decades into MMA. And so I absolutely keep up with it. And I do watch the big shows. Um, and I would watch every Saturday, but it's just, um, too tough to do that now. And I do watch the big fights. Um, yeah, it's a yeah, lot. It, it used to be once a month and now it's every weekend. It's every Saturday night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I try to, I try to watch the main event and then, um, on the, um, you know, the pay-per-views, I'll watch the, the pay-per-view. Sometimes I'll watch the 10 matches. Sometimes I'll just watch the top five, yeah. um, or nine matches. Sometimes I'll watch the top five, but, um, you know, it's, it's just so much. And especially like, you know, as wrestling keeps adding new stuff, it's, it's more and more time consuming. So it's, 
yeah, I have, I have no downtime. I mean, at all from, from, you know, because it's either, it's either, you know, family, essentially it's either family or it's wrestling with a little UFC thrown in. There's not really much, you know, yeah, I went to a concert Saturday night, but that's, that's family, you know? Yeah. Right. I went, you know, um, miniature golfing on Sunday and, hey. and, um, you know, which we, do, you know, or, or, you know, go out to dinner with friends and things like that. I do all of that. Um, and I have a, a you know, I, I definitely have a, a friend's family base that we try to see as often as possible. And I'm pretty good at, at, at doing that, you know, as far as keeping up with my childhood, a couple of childhood friends and things like that. But it's, it's like, I don't have a time where I'm going to sit down and watch a sitcom, you know, or Seinfeld or something. Although I did watch that uh, a couple of times um, on, you know, when I was on a, on like a weekend away, or just kind of turn on the TV and watch Seinfeld and laugh and stuff. But I don't do that, you know, which yeah. I could, you know, but wrestling is very, very time consuming. Yeah, I feel like you can't take a vacation because then you'll miss Raw and Dynamite and Rampage and SmackDown well, I'm, I'm, and Collision. I'm, I'm supposed to do a bunch of vacations this year. So, but it's, it's, it's hard to do. It's so hard. Yeah. <laughs> I could just see you sitting on the beach, like watching NXT on your phone or something. No, I won't do that. I won't do that. When I'm, okay. when I'm off, when I'm off, I'm off. Good. You know, good. like it's like when, it's when, a, when I'm with my friend. When I when I'm with when I'm with my friends or my family, um, wrestling, I won't say never comes up because you know my son will bring it up to, and everything like that, and it'll come up with some and, and it'll come up a little bit with his friends. But I have a group of friends where it never or rarely or never comes up, mm. and and I never bring it up. Like even even with with my family, um, you know, um, I rarely bring it up. You know, I mean, like we'll go, but you know, yeah, I'll, I try to take you know them to. Uh, like Vegas and stuff for the, for the thing. I took my son and his, and his um, fiance and things like that. So I try to do that, but that's more of, um, you know, um, it's just a time that I can spend. Um, I mean, I always want to spend time with them. That's all. So, yeah. so, so I bite, but yeah, it's always about spending time with people. Um, right. yeah. There's no, there's no downtime. I've enjoyed spending this time with you, Dave, and I want to thank you for, you know, giving me the time to share this conversation with me and, get some insight into who you are and how you work and your take on pro wrestling. I, I think it's fascinating. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you got to do this. I mean, it was really interesting. I mean, I love to talk wrestling, you know, a lot. Yeah, we so. could talk for another six hours. I'm going to have to have you on again sometime soon. If that's well, okay we, with you. Sure. We can do this again. Absolutely. I, uh, I end every conversation with gratitude because it's such an important part of my life. I wake up every day. I, I say out loud three things I'm grateful for. And I end every conversation with that too. So what are three things in your life, Dave, that you're grateful for right now? I'm grateful for my kids. I'm grateful for um, my friends. I'm grateful for, um, you know, everyone in my life. I have so many wonderful uh, people close to me in my life, you know, and um, I'm grateful for the ones who are, you know, and I think about them all the time. I'm grateful the, for the ones who were important in my life that are no longer here. And, um, you know, grateful for animals and, uh, yeah, you know, just very grateful for the life I've been allowed to live. Um, you know, that, uh, you know, I look back and I've had a lot, a lot, a lot of lucky breaks mm. and, um, you know, but I've worked hard for them. I've worked, sure. very, I've worked, I have worked so hard in this life. It's, it's, in, it's incredible. I mean, I, it's, when I look back, you know, it's like, you know, I've, probably written more words on sports than anyone who ever lived. I'm, I'm going to guess. And, and you not, keep showing if, up. I mean, that's the thing. I want to acknowledge you. You keep showing up and you have been showing up for 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, and 2020. That's over five decades. Yeah, yeah. And every, every issue, I mean, I strive to get those issues as good as possible, you know? And, um, you know, it's like I take great pride when, when there's a big story that I can, you know, nail it. It's really, you know, and it's, it's, um, it's time consuming, consuming, and it's uh, very, you know, you got to think, got to think a lot and you got to think about so I many different things. I think it's things. all consuming, not just time consuming. It consumes a lot. It consumes your thoughts. It consumes your time. It consumes your effort. It consumes a lot of things. Yeah. 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 Well, that's why like when it's gone, like if I go to the beach, right. Yeah. I do not think wrestling. I yeah. mean, when, when I'm away, I don't like to think wrestling when I'm not, um, um, but, but, you know, like, look, I'm thinking wrestling 18 hours a day. So sure. it's like, it's plenty of time, so to speak, yeah. maybe not 18, but, but on, on Thursdays, it's 18. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, Dave, thank you so much. Such a pleasure to be able to chat with you. Okay, you're very welcome. And it was really, it was, it was really fun. We'll do it again sometime soon. Probably we'll do the next one in person. How about that? Great. Awesome. That'd be All easy. Right.